today's scripture is Luke 18, 9 through 14. Then Jesus told this story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness and scorned everyone else. Two men went out to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not like the other people. Cheaters, sinners, adulterers. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give you a tenth of my income. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to the heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, Oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. I tell you, this sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home, justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Amen. 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 And let us pray. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I heard from uh, Judy had been uh, uh, talking about uh, the combined service at Byron, and last Sunday I was focused on the prayers. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the prayers is uh, uh, consistent and consistent uh, persevering prayers uh, marks God's people. But this morning there's something that I really want to talk about in being humble yourself but it's focusedly on one simple verse from the readings for this morning. For I tell you, the humble will be justified. For I tell you, the humble will be justified. And today we are looking uh, at two people who offer to God very different prayers. And both prayers reveal something about the heart of these men. One man felt he had enough righteousness within himself to be justified before God, and the other realized his utter hopelessness and placed himself on the mercy of God. We may learn many things in this text, but the main things today is what does it take to be justified before God. Our lives depend on the answer of this question. What does it make? Or what does it take to be justified before God? One other thing, because this parable has, as one of its examples, a Pharisee don't think that is meant only for lost legalistics. In case Jesus does not turn to the Pharisee and tell them a parable, it is meant for all to hear and consider. And that's the readings for this morning. In verse 9, it states something like this, and I want you to be with me every step that I walk so we can take to understand the justification. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Why did Jesus tell this parable? There were two basically reasons, and I want you to remember that. First, 
there were some in his midst who trusted in their own righteousness to be glorified or in other words to be justified before God and second these who trusted in themselves treated others with contempt or with hatred and disapproval my question to you and all of us what is justification and I want to give you some verse from the Bible that help you down the way or down to the end of the days from Romans 3 verse 26 through 27 says this it was to show his righteousness at the present time so he might be just and a justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No. But by the law of faith, for we hold that no one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And through Him, we have also obtained access by faith into his grace in which we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. But in Galatians chapter 2 verse 16, listen carefully. Yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law because by words of the law no one no one will be justified it is very plain from this passage that justification does not come through our effort but from faith in Christ alone. Justification is an instantaneous legal act of God in which we think of our sins as forgiven and Christ's righteousness as belong to us and declare us to be righteous in His sight. To be justified before God is God declaring us righteous because He has forgiven us and granted Jesus' righteousness to us. In our parable this morning, Jesus is first warning us against looking to ourselves for justification. Some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous. We see a man who believes he has sufficient righteousness within himself to be justified before God. Another point of our Lord makes here is that while these people were trusting in themselves, they also are making the mistake of comparing themselves to others and treating others with contempt. The attitude of someone who believes they are righteous in themselves is to look to others and stay one step ahead of them. Rather than seeing Christ as the model of righteousness, 
they often fabricate a system in their own mind that places them one step ahead of them. They think they are acceptable before God because they are not extortionists, unjust, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. Please understand, beloved. Just because you can write a few good things about yourself does not make you fit for heaven. Just because you are not a thief and you are fair and faithful to your wife does not make you fit for God's kingdom. I hope this sink into our soul this morning. Doing good things will never make you more acceptable to God than a thief, a cheat, or an adulterer. Let's see verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The common practice in the temple was prayer. It was the house of prayer. And Jesus picture for us a scene to teach us about justification. As we have learned before, the Pharisees were the religious elite of that day. They had built an elaborate system by which they sold God's approval through hand religious work. They were society's model of religion. If anyone should have been justified before God, in the eyes of the society, it would have been these religious Pharisees. After all, they followed the letter of the law. In the mind of the religious leaders, it was a tent and was scenario or those God loved and everyone else, the others. The other man Jesus mentioned is the tax collector. Tax collector were famous for their fevery and the fact that they had sold out their land to Rome. Being employed by the Roman empires left a very bad taste in the mouth of the Jews. They were considered sinners with a capital S, ruthless and immoral. You could not get much worse than a tax collector, tax collector in the minds of the people. So if there is anyone who should not be justified, surely it was this rotten, sinful tax collector. It is possible for a deeply religious person to lost and a repentant sinners to say, Look, being famous for great reversal set up a dilemma for all of us. Who would be a candidate for justification? A religious leader? who conforms to the letters of the law or are daily low-life publicans. To get a clue, let examine their prayers. A prayer can say a lot about a person. In verse 11, it says this, the Pharisee standing by himself prayed as, God, I thank you that I am not like the other men, extortionists, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. 
At first glance, we might be tempted to think this portion does not apply to us. Or we might show our self-righteousness by thanking God that we are not like this Pharisee. However, a deep look reveals that this text hit much closer to home than we may care to admit. The Pharisee had some really good theology. He did not believe he could acquire this good God honoring traits apart from God giving them to him. In this regard, he was reformed in his view of God. He was no Pelagian, thinking he could somehow accomplish on his own the things God requires. He was no semi-Pelagian, thinking that God was there to help, but it's really our efforts that secure God's aid. He was orthodox in the sense of understanding that if there was anything good accomplished in his sinful heart, it was a work of God. He would affirm this. God, I thank you. He thanks God for the work that he has been done in his life. He thanked God that he was not thief or that he did not cheat people. He thanked God that he was not an adulterer. He was faithful to his wife. All of these are good honoring traits and we thank God for them. God had worked morality in his life. So what is the problem? God has worked religiously as well as morally. He went over and above the one required fast a year at the day of the atonement. This man fast twice a week. He was a tither of all that he got. He was religious and thank God for that as well. We have no reason to doubt any of what the Pharisees say. So what is the problem? He was doing good things and granted God with the ability to do them. The problem was he trusted himself that he was righteous. He believed that he could trust and rely on the good character trait to get him to heaven. He thought that God would be satisfied with a righteousness he had attained. Be careful about that. Be careful about thinking of yourself and trusting yourself that you do everything in you, by you, or by myself. In other words, we must never look to ourselves as a source of our righteousness and depend on them for salvation. Don't look at that. And it is all Christ from the start to finish and nothing else. Justification comes only from Jesus Christ. Never Christ and our effort, even when we begin to see the work of Christ in our lives, conforming us to his image. We must never trust in that for our justification by always in humility see that God has done it all, even though 
I'm more like him today than I was when I was first saved. I still trust in him and not in myself. Even after someone had been a Christian for 60 years, that person must still in humility rely on Christ and the mercy of God. God, be merciful to me. I am a sinner. Look deeply inside our hearts for what is going on that we are people of God thinking of ourselves that I am inside the realm of God without knowing that everything that we are seeing is not by myself but through Christ Jesus our Lord. And here he comes for the broken sinner. But the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Here is this prayer. We see a humble heart. Standing from the far and so hard for him to walk to see Christ instead of looking at him he reflect himself his spirit to him but look down his eyes to the ground one thing that I people just thinking when the African people been singing and they call, we are marching, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. They are not walking straight. But they are walking forward and backward. For them, I'd rather have time to be with God than running to Him now. And that's the end of the story. And that's how. He stood far, but his heart is already with God and walking over there and say, God, be merciful to me, I am a sinner. Knowing that I didn't do anything to be in the eyes of God, I am a sinner. But to be justified only in Jesus Christ, not by myself. My brothers and sisters, sometimes we get into our lives and we are proud of ourselves and we're doing everything and we convey ourselves to the others and we look at them, we are better than them. In your own deal. But just to be justified in the eyes of God, we have to know we are the sinners and we are standing from far, looking at him and walking slowly, knowing you are in the presence of God because Jesus Christ is justification to all of us. And if you know that, your life will be more humble than anything else. And brothers and sisters, there's nothing we can do if you think you can walk to heaven now without Jesus, go ahead. But if you think I can walk now to heaven because of Jesus, you will have the kingdom. But if you do it because you think you can do, that life will end over here. Now let us pray. Loving God, we are so thankful for this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the story you told us that we learned from over there. There's nothing we can do but with you, oh God, 
we can accomplish anything in our lives. There's nothing impossible when our life is in you. I ask for your blessing upon your church over here and for those that are not here with us. And let us follow you humbly in your name. God, we give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.